Hey folks, welcome to Roll of Law. With Wizards of the Coast behaving badly, a lot of people have been looking for other games to try. But even if you like Dungeons & Dragons and you like Wizards of the Coast, I recommend trying a variety of games. You will be better at any game you play or run if you've tried a variety of things and seen other ways to approach it. So the one I want to recommend right now is Stars Without Number, and this is the revised edition. I recommend it over the first edition. It's got a lot of improvements. It's by Kevin Crawford. So what do I like about this game? Well, first, it scratches a very particular kind of itch for me. When I watched Firefly, all one season of it way back when, I thought, man, this would be a really great role-playing game experience because you've got sort of a small group of diverse people with different talents and skills and, you know, things they do. And they're trying to keep their ship going. They're dealing with a variety of challenges each, you know, each sort of week. And I thought, man, that would be really good. And Stars Without Number is excellent at creating that kind of play experience. It's really, really good for that. But that's not all it can do. I've had games that were, you know, where you're suiting up in mechs and going on to fight, you know, fight monsters on some alien planet. And it does a good job of that as well. Now, this is a game that is fairly accessible, especially if you are coming at this from a Dungeons and Dragons background. Uh, Blades in the Dark, which I covered last time, really for a lot of D&D players requires a lot of sort of reassessing how you think about games and how you approach them. Whereas Stars Without Number is, uh, it's more mechanical, so a lot of it is, is just learning the rules, but the rules are going to be fairly familiar and fairly friendly if you're coming at this from a D&D perspective. You've got hit points, you've got damage your weapons do, uh, you're rolling a d20 to attack most of the time, so all of these things are going to feel fairly friendly, but there are a variety of rules, it does play a bit differently, uh, in particular, Stars Without Number tends to be a little bit more lethal and a little bit more dangerous than a lot of Dungeons & Dragons games, which I kind of like. I like a game where it feels like I've got some skin in the game when I'm, you know, out on an adventure that my character could actually die out here. That, to me, sort of raises the stakes. Now, that's not for everybody, and there are ways to run Stars Without Number where it's more lethal or less lethal. And one of the things I really like about this is that uh, Kevin Crawford gives directions as to how you can do that if you want to tune the game in various ways. There's actually a section in this on sort of homebrew options. Now, another thing you might like about this one is the price tag. And this is not where I'm like going to drop an affiliate link or anything like that. This is a game that you can play for free. And that's a big deal for a lot of people right now who are sort of struggling. Uh, the economy is doing a thing and people are, a lot of people are short on cash, but you can get Stars Without Number. There's a free edition of this that actually has everything you need to play it. And you can download that for nothing. The paid version has some additional stuff, like if you want to have mechs or AI PCs or that kind of thing. But it's really that they put the core, Kevin Crawford put the core of the book out there for, for free and then essentially created it as if you want to pay, you can get some extra bonus content. And really, I buy this in hardcover uh, for two reasons. One, I kind of like having the hardcover. I, I like the tactile sense of it. But he's also just a guy I want to give my money to. I mean, this is a guy who I, he's sort of a soul shop. And he's one of these people who you just kind of want to support. Um, I, in terms of looking at this compared to Wizards, uh, he said basically, and I don't know if Stars Without Number has a Creative Commons license or not. I know that the upcoming Cities Without Number, I think his plan is for Creative Commons licensing on most of it. Uh, but he's basically come out and said, listen, I don't mind if people put out material for this just stay away from certain things that are sort of his trademarks and his uh, his world building. And he's got a really interesting world that he's created. There's a lot of rich lore. It's really worth uh, exploring that as well. But he's basically said, listen, I want to support other people. He said, I've built on the creations of, you know, what's come before me. I really want to contribute to that. I think that's solid. Uh, another thing that he does that I think is a really great 
thing to see is uh, if you go on the Stars Without Numbers uh, Reddit, uh, you will see that he will he's an active participant there and he'll just pop up to answer questions. So you've got newbies going, I don't really know how ship combat works. How do I make this, you know, and he pops in and says, oh, you know, here's the, you know, here's what you're doing wrong. Here's how it's supposed to go. Here's whatever. Or somebody says, hey, I have this really interesting question about sort of the deep lore about this. You know, this is, and he'll pop up and say, hey, um, here's, here's my answer to that. Uh, he's a, a really friendly and approachable guy in that sense. So I, I really want to support him. Uh, mechanically, this is based uh, largely on a D20 combat role. So again, for Dungeons & Dragons players, it's going to be very uh, easy to approach. Uh, it's fairly simple and fairly straightforward. There's a lot of uh, sort of... Uh, it's very easy to approach in that sense that there's not a lot of sort of complicated rules. This is not going to be something where you're going to find tables and tables of, you know, critical hit tables and exceptions and so forth but there is enough meat to it that it will accomplish whatever you need to. And it will feel, um, you know, it's not going to feel like you're having to make stuff up all the time as you go, which is a real problem with some games where, you know, they, where things are not well defined and you end up um, sort of floundering. I've never had that problem with stars without number. Um, it's not a game where I find I have to make up a bunch of rules on the fly. It's got, rules for building ships from nothing. It's got rules for various weapons. It's got feats. It's got all sorts of things. So I really recommend checking this one out. One thing I'm going to really strongly uh, sort of recommend and talk about here as something that I think is really good. I mentioned before that, you know, you will get better at playing and especially running other games when you play a variety of them. And so one thing that I really like out of Stars Without Number and that I've stolen and I use in every other game is the concept of how they handle factions. And factions are basically just groups in the world that want to do things. You know, so in any game that you're going to be playing in, probably it's not just the player characters who are taking actions, who are taking steps. It's usually going to be that a variety of different organizations and groups and people all have their different goals and they should be working towards them. And one problem is keeping track of that. And how do you make it so that your game feels vibrant, that it's not just that the players are the only sort of movers, but that they're actually part of a world that is dynamic and a bunch of shifting gears and a bunch of stuff going on. Because if you can get that second thing going well, where players are like, how do we not just do our own thing? but predict the actions that other people are going to take, that's where you get into a really interesting kind of game. Uh, the faction turn and the faction system that they have in this is excellent for that. It helps you track what other groups might be doing. It has some rules for trying to figure out, are they gonna be successful at those things? You know, are they going to be able to do it? And so even if I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons, which has very little thematically, in common with stars without number, right? Stars without number, you're sitting there going, uh, what do spaceships have to do with my orc warrior? Well, you know, the very, the simple concept and the way that they go about handling these faction turns is something that I sort of borrow and use for that. And I found players tend to react quite positively when they see that there's other people in the world who are trying to take uh, trying to take actions and those actions might not even be to thwart the pcs it might just be you know one particular thieves guild is having a, a fight with another thieves guild and which one is gonna prevail you know these kinds of things happening in the background that have nothing to do with the players uh can really add some life to your game in a way that uh way that you can't really get to without doing that. So I have borrowed that and I've used it in every game since I've played Stars Without Number. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, you can get this one for free. Um, so really the only cost to trying it is sitting down and having a session with it and convincing your players to give it a go. Um, so I hope you give this one a try. It's one of my favorite games. I've got an ongoing campaign that I'm going to run here sort of as I can find the time, because 
lawyer scheduling is a bit of a thing, but uh, so you can watch some of those previous videos to see Stars Without Number in play. Although at this point, at the point in the campaign, uh, they haven't yet got their first ship. So it's just, you can see Stars Without Number being played um, kind of as a ground game. And you can see how well it handles different things. Uh, keep watching that, and I'm sure that there's going to be ship-to-ship uh, -ship combat, there's going to be trading, there's going to be all sorts of chaos. So, thank you. I just wanted to share this one with you guys, and uh, see you next time.